Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. Today we have invited Mr. Jimmy Zong, the co-founder of EOS Project. Welcome. All right, thank you. <laughs> so EOS is a scalable, secure, and decentralized blockchain app platform equipped with high TPS, uh, 100K, is it? Uh, yeah, roughly like that, hopefully. We're starting a later on stage, yeah. Uh, which allows infinite possibilities for developers and blockchain app-related projects. So uh, using the triangular value of blockchain projects that you explain, you, you love explaining, uh, could you briefly explain about the EOS project? Yeah, so a lot of people have heard of Ethereum, have heard of EOS. Uh, in short, you know, we are a more scalable, more decentralized, more uh, developer-friendly type of EOS. Mm -hmm. uh, we hate to compare to Ethereum right now because Ethereum is too slow. Mm -hmm. They only support like 20 transactions per second. And, and I think to actually build something that's meaningful for developers, you have to scale. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think by the, by the end of this year or beginning of next year, we're, we are going to launch a product, we're going to launch the mainnet, and, it, and it's going to support you know, uh, more than what EOS supports right now, and it's going to be more decentralized, more secure, more developer friendly. So IOST, EOS, uses a POB system, which ref is referred to as an efficient and resili resilient consensus mechanism. So when simply put, how would you describe this consensus algorithm? Uh, in short, proof of believability, uh, which is POB, uh, stands for, you know, uh, basically we add this actual layer of believability, which is reputation, on top of the vanilla POS system. Mm -hmm. uh, simply means that, you know, in a vanilla POS system, you have to be rich, right? When you're rich, you're more powerful. Yes, but yes. in a system like this, uh, not only you have to be rich, but also you have to be actually reputable. You have to be doing good things, you know, helping grandmas or things like that. <laughs> doing good things in the community actually helps you to make more money within the system. So how would uh, maybe a block producer or a node build their own uh, believability? How would they build their yeah. reputation? So uh, in short, reputation, uh, we have a second layer of token called survey. It stands for your, your reputation. Survey has like three features. It's like self-generated, uh, now tradable, self-destructive. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you cannot be buying your reputation from Binance or Arbit or Bitfarm, right? Mm -hmm. You can only you know, accumulate reputation by doing good things, either by verifying transactions or by being a witness or by you know, broadcasting blocks, doing good things in the community, being active in the community and actually you know, working for the network. Mm -hmm. That's how you accumulate the survey, right? And after a while, you know, after you get rewarded a few times by broadcasting blocks, survey gets empty. Right? Mm -hmm. So you have to be doing good things constantly. It's not like you just do like five good things and you have reputation, you'll be there forever. So uh, your reputation is like up and down, up and down. You have to be doing good things all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I heard that uh, the block producers are randomized in yep. the sense that they don't uh, centralize the production of the blocks. Yep. So could you touch a little bit on that? Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, uh, the way we can make it faster, even without sharding, just with POB, is because we have fewer people to reach consensus. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's like the same thing, like EOS is faster than Ethereum is because EOS only have 21 nodes. Mm -hmm. But the problem with EOS is that if you only have 21 fixed nodes, mm -hmm. it's very centralized and there are a lot of security issues and other issues as well. For us, you know, we have a smaller group of people reaching consensus all the time. Say we have like 5,000 nodes right now, right? We can always handpick or select like 10% of people with a high reputation to actually reach consensus. So we become a smaller group to reach consensus, right? And later on, you know, because people's reputation change back and forth, mm -hmm. some people's reputation gets emptied, then they have to start over, they go back and forth. So the group is always changing, it's like a dynamic group. Mm -hmm. That's how we actually make it randomized and, 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 and actually dynamic for the POB part. The sharding part is a separate story, but that's not the point for me. <laughs> so per se, a user has a complaint, or maybe a group of user has a little bit of a complaint on the system, how the system runs. How would this complaint be uh, well, taken into account to the block producers? Yeah, as for the governance issue, uh, right now we're taking the on-chain governance protocol, which means that you know, people have to vote on different things and actually decide who is a producer and who is not. Mm -hmm. And, I, and, and you know, in, the, in, the, in the meantime, uh, uh, we're trying to make every, everything more technical instead of more personal, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that's the problem for EOS right now. It's like, a lot of things are very personal. A lot of people are saying this is wrong, that is wrong. They have like constitutions, things like that. You know, the way we look at blockchain right now as a technology, mm -hmm. code is a lot, right? Technology is a lot. So we're trying to make everything more rational by the technology. So you're not supposed to say, hey, I don't like him or whatever. As long as he's doing legit things and good things in the network, mm -hmm. they're fine. So we're trying to make the technology decide who is good and who is not. Mm -hmm. So uh, EOS is a blockchain application platform and EOS just launched their testnet Everest 0.5. Uh, to the end users, how would we feel the technological advances that EOS provides? Uh, to the end users, I think a few things. Number one is we, by the end of this year, we are going to be uh, if not the only one, but at least one of the best 
mm-hmm. public chains there that people can actually build um, protocols and the apps on top of it. We're also developing our ecosystem here, and, and hope, hopefully, you know, by the end of this year or beginning of next year, we can actually ship softwares on top of LST so mm-hmm. actual customer can use it. Mm-hmm. You know, we think we consider blockchain as something you know no, normal people should be able to use. Like when you use Google or or you know when you actually get online, you don't understand the technology behind it. You don't have to. You don't understand yes, how yes. TCP/IP works. It should be the same thing for blockchain, right? Like you're not supposed to be very tech savvy to use a blockchain product like like you install MetaMask, have all this complicated yeah. wallet like that. You're supposed to be able to use it seamlessly, and that's what we're gonna do. So starting next year, we're all gonna have more DApps and protocols launched on top of LST, and we're gonna reach out to a lot of customers. And I think we are gonna be among all the blockchains, one of the first with millions or hundreds of millions of users. So when it comes to uh, DApps, blockchain applications, uh, there are a lot of categories. There's finance, yeah. uh, you know, games, chats, wallets. Yeah. To your part, what, what comes as priority? Um, so in general, you know, we are building an operating system, so well, we're very open in it. So anyone can just build whatever they want on top of us because we're more scalable. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, in terms of our own development, personally, you know, I'm interested in content distribution, social network, I am, uh, or, or financial stuff, things like that. I think in particular, we are working on information, data governance, and uh, uh, you know, data or content distribution type of stuff. I think that's the easiest way. That's like step one for us to reach out to a lot of users mm-hmm. uh, in terms of you know uh, having people to gather content from the platforms that's built on top of IOST. Mm-hmm. So uh, IOST recently li- was listed on Upbeat GoPax, and I'm pretty sure you're planning to expand a little bit more. So what's the drive between the expansion in the Korean market? Yeah, so uh, we've been taking Korean market very seriously all the, all the time. I think in uh, Right now, Japan, Korea, China, uh, the United States, and also uh, Germany and a few other countries, uh, we have like full-time employees in the office there. Mm-hmm. We actually have a team here in Seoul. So we've been taking the market very seriously, and uh, we're looking forward to talking to more people in Korea, and actually have more developers join us, and uh, you know, basically uh, uh, you know, do some amazing things with us together. Mm-hmm. So uh, I just saw on the website of GoPax, you guys did a 2 million airdrops, is it? Uh, yeah, 2 million LST, yeah. And you guys plan to uh, expand your uh, reputation or publicity through events like that in the future? Uh, potentially. So uh, the way we look at airdrop or promotional events like that is not to actually get people to you know claim the airdrop directly or whatever. Uh, we tend to have people you know uh, learn about IOST, then they can get the airdrop or or or, or things like that, right? Mm-hmm. But when we actually get listed, some exchange they want to boost their trading volume or things like that or get more traction. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's a viable way. Mm-hmm. But in, but you know, in, in short, we are trying to raise more awareness. We are taking the community seriously. I think in blockchain, everything is open source, right? Mm-hmm. So your reputation really matters. Like people need to know who you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So while the project is very prominent with great potential. The token price itself is also a big issue to the small-time investors and yep. big time here in Korea as well. Uh, currently, uh, the EOS, uh, EOS token is traded at 31. Uh, and how do you view the outlook on the EOS token in the future in the Korean market and any future release plans to uh, pump up the price maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, theoretically, we're not, allow- we're not allowed to talk about price directly. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think right now it's a bearish market. So every, every altcoin or even Bitcoin itself is like, kind of going down. Uh, I think what's important for us is like we are a project that's aiming for the long run. So as I said, I think in the year of 2019 or even beginning of next year, we are going to have like real applications, real product building on top of LNC with a lot of with millions of users. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the point we are going to actually present our true value. Because right now everything is speculative, right? Mm-hmm. Like the whole crypto market right now is highly speculative, yes. probably except Bitcoin. So everyone is trying to assume there will be stuff built on top of it. So the whole sentiment is like very sensitive, right? Mm-hmm. When the market goes down, you know people are very scared. They're like, what's going on? Because they don't see enough substance to support the price. Mm-hmm. So we are going to build the substance. We are going to have the substance to support the price. I think in the near future, there's, there's only half a year or a few months left. Uh, we're looking forward to it. So the testnet just got launched on June, yeah. and the mainnet launch is due on? The mainnet is supposed to be launched. Uh, the original date was actually mid-2019, mm-hmm. but we moved the date ahead. So right now, we're looking at either end of this year or beginning of next year. But I think right now it's August already, so uh, within six months. <laughs> so within six months and plus a little bit of time to, for the blockchain application developers to work on their projects, maybe within the next year we'll be able to expect. We are uh, internally and also uh, on the outside working on the applications and protocols already mm-hmm. uh, on the test net. Mm-hmm. So by the time we have the manual launch, we won't wait for too long to actually have the real application because mm-hmm. the development is right now is in parallel. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for your time. Do you have any last comments for our audience? All right, thank you. Uh, hey guys, uh, you know, glad to be here today and talking to our Korean community. Uh, we are IOST and uh, you know, hopefully uh, uh, we can actually let more Korean people know who we are and uh, we're trying to build a more decentralized, uh, more secure, more developer friendly type of EOS. And uh, we're going to have it launched uh, by the end of this year. And uh, you know, we're looking forward to talking to you guys again. Thank you. Mr. Zhang, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Jimmy Zhang, the co-founder of EOS. Thank you. Thank you.